In Flanders fields the poppies blow, between the crosses row on row, that mark our place and in the sky, the larks still bravely singing fly. Scarce heard amid the guns below, we are the dead, short days ago. We lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow, loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders fields. Take up our quarrel with the foe, to you from failing hands we throw. The torch be yours to hold it high, if ye break faith with us who die. We shall not sleep through puppies grow in Flanders fields. to write his name in Huddersfield Town legend. And he takes that chance! Right, guys, welcome to episode 14 of the Andy Takes That Chance podcast. Um, Remembrance, a little poem there for Remembrance Sunday and the weekend gone. Uh, Guys, we've got four points in one week there's myself matt neil and richard el coso loco cosmala good evening all right guys we saw a rip roaring pulsating game end to end probably one of the best games we've seen in the premier league era um outstanding game town a little bit unlucky in the end I just, before we just dissect that, I just want to think the game, what a game. It was absolutely buzzing. I had to laugh listening back to my uh, kind of bit with Jamie in the gas club. I sounded like, a bit like Kevin Keegan. And we're going we're, we're gonna to be fighting all the way. And you say that about a man like David Wagner. We're going to be... I was proper pumped up. And I think it just came as a result of such an amazing game of football. I thought... The atmosphere was sensational in the South Stand and everywhere else. I thought the West Ham fans, I knew they'd bring a good uh, crew up. If you looked in their end, let's be honest, there wouldn't be many people getting in the uh, you know, the family fun day uh, <laughs> down at their place. They were proper supporters and they were great in the gas club before and after we had a good drink. And I, I just loved the day, full stop, the noise. The atmosphere, the, it had controversy, it had the gutting ending really, and it could have been even worse for, for Moy's bald head. Just walked out of the ground thinking, wow, I'd just get me a beer. The last thing I wanted to do really was record anything with Jamie. I was buzzing, and when I listen back to that, it sounds like I've kind of been on some healing balloons, but I just thought, what a game of football. A bit stronger, I think, than that. Uddersfield Town have <laughs> come a long way. Because when you think what they were doing, they were slinging on Antonio, they were slinging on Chikorito. They, they were absolute Alamo. They were like players worth billions. Mill, well, millions, let's not exaggerate. But, and I just thought, we gave them a great game. And I, I thought, we deserve to win. There's not much to add to that, to be honest. It, were, it was a belting game of football. Absolute cracker from start to finish. Because it's pretty much covered it all. Not Nothing much to say, to be honest. That's so, the end. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for listening to episode four. No. Okay. <laughs> so, Town are, Neil, Cosy, we're top of the league in terms of how many times we've hit the woodwork oh, this season. Yeah. Uh, yes, so. It's a joke, isn't it? It's a joke. We must, I think we must possibly be the, at this stage of a season, I would be very surprised if any team in the history of the Premier League. In at, at this point in November, has hit the woodwork more times than they've scored goals. Well, the, the two on Saturday, Mounier, it's a cracking header to be honest. Fabianski can't fault him. It's just it's ah. just a bloody good save. I think I said I've got to apologise. I think the emotion, but I said it. Fabianski knew nothing about it. He knew, no, about he knew everything about it. About it. Say, cracking it save. was sensational. I think I bagged him here last week, thinking he may be a bit of a he weakling. Did he jinxed it? <laughs> yeah, sorry, but but that it was the, sensational. What the, save. the one with Billing? Yeah, it's a cross. But when you watch that from side angle on replay, it's spinning. How has it come out? How has it not it come off the keeper's the wrong way back? As well. At one point, it's it's half yeah. over line. How's it but not it come off his back? Comes. How's it coming off Fabian's back? At poor. Unbelievable. Oh, there were one in Barcelona the other week where Ter Stegen it just exactly the same. It his back and went in. It's like why don't we get yeah, that we're look? Cursed. We're cursed. It's unbelievable. I, I would like to put an appeal out now on the podcast for somebody with a degree in physics to come on and let us know how that 
doesn't go into the back of the net. Well, it I'm, didn't deserve to. It wasn't an intentional shot, but we've seen that go in so many I, times. I, I tweeted it down after they said they could borrow Peter Kay's orbital sander and take a bit of take a bit of summer off port. It might, they might start creeping <laughs> in then. Uh, what did Barry Fry do? Did he all four corners of the ground or whatever? Yeah, maybe we have to do something like that. We're gonna but. have to start doing summer, but we. We, we do just seem to be cursed. We, what was that, nine or ten? Nine, I think. It's yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. God. When ridiculous. you're counting that woodwork. I've never known a... There's never been a season like it, has there, for no. a post? Maybe there has been in total if you'd... Fought but I can't remember anything like this. It's ridiculous. That's so, bonkers. Cosy, as the number one Lukash Fabianski <laughs> fan yeah, sorry, in the Premier League, glasses. which was the better save, would you say? The volley from Mounier against Swansea last year where he tipped that onto the bar <laughs> or the header? Two outstanding saves, Ooh. probably the best saves we've seen. I, I th- it's got a bit header on Saturday for me because it was so. point blank on it, and he's, he hasn't got much time to think about that. And he's just flung himself and got enough on it. The power. I wonder if he's got something against the Seal Town Fabianski. Although the goal, I, mean, I suppose, will come at him later on, but he did seem a bit flat footed. It was a strange yeah. goal, wasn't it? And that yeah. as well. So maybe he kind of undid a bit of his good work From there. Where we were sat, we actually said we thought he thought. It were going wide. Mm. It were almost like he sort of seen it out. Then all of a sudden, it's, yeah. in, it's in bottom corner. Just on a minor weird issue, Declan Rice. There were a guy next to me just booing him every time he got the ball. Really, really loud. Now, a, I, I, I thought, is it something to do with a poppy or B? Have we come across him in the past? Because it was the most oddest thing ever. Every time he got the ball, he were going absolutely. I, mental I thought he were their best player. Yeah, yeah. He, I he, 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 looks, he looks a good player, does that lad? Well, I, he's, he's, he's been dialing for I, England, doesn't he? I don't think he's made a decision, has he yet? Apparently so. Has he? Well, don't know why they're booing him then, but no. I thought not... the best player for West Ham, and I thought it was outstanding, was Philippe Anderson. Yeah, he's good. And, uh, he's no doubt in his good. But, De- 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 yeah, yeah, but Declan Rice really was, be, yeah. was I think the, the worst thing about Anderson, I don't know about you, but you could see him getting in the game. You could see him be more influential, yeah. but we couldn't do anything about it. You know, like you could you can normally but spot when, things. When players at that level, though, yeah. they're going to do you, aren't they? Yeah. And let's be honest, that... Their goal, as much as it's a killer for us, because it's like pinging round the box and in oh. and out, he stuck that like an exercise yeah. in the one spot where he could score it with a cracking finish. He won. You've won. got to give him credit on that. So dagger through the heart. But that, kind of going back to our goal, Pritchard, and again, we've had kind of this discussion, we had a really a debate, didn't we, on a few shows ago and that as well. But that's what I love about the guy, and he got picked up with commentary. He's always willing to shoot. He's always going to you know have a go. And, and yeah, whether it should have gone in is debatable, but that's what I love about the guy. Yeah. He's trying to make stuff happen yeah. and, and pop a shot off and that as well. And this is, I, I think he's so thought, massive for our he, he survival. He played really well on Saturday. Yeah. And he just, Best, I, I thought, could tell was, when he went through that one-on-one, he'd just gone. He, 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 I, th- I think he'd just yeah. gone. Whether he'd have got there, even if it had been mm. start game, is debatable. But for me, it, Alex Pritchard, I, I've I've said a few things about Alex Pritchard in terms of that he doesn't do enough in in the final third. He works hard, technically he's good, but he, in terms of tangible outlet, you know, he, he's he's not done enough yet. But I thought for the first 30, 35 minutes in particular on Saturday, he was absolutely outstanding, and he dropped off. He's he's, he's a very very intelligent player, and he dropped off into certain areas. And the system we were playing on Saturday, the you know the three five one one really worked for us because he had a number of players coming off, you know, sort of uh, moving off of him and it allowed him to really do what he does best and that's to sort of spot little angles yeah. and put people through and I thought for that, I thought the formation change in the second half scuppered him a little bit because we went four four two, didn't we? And he, yeah, he kind it's of not for him, is it? But Pritchard for, under the right circumstances definitely he, he was excellent part first play, half. But f- for me as well, I think you've got to look at Chris Lerber till he got injured, was outstanding again. Um, I know it's been caused quite a bit of argument on Twitter but for me outstanding, probably his best performance in a town shirt were Mounier, everything but a goal had lad on Saturday, I thought he was mm. absolutely brilliant. I think the thing that impressed me about individuals, I, I remember coming in last week saying two days extra, you know we looked out on his feet against Fulham, two days extra, extra rest they have, not any of it, no. we were absolutely sensational no. from the first minute, we really took it to them and that was yeah. all, I was so proud, it was like, this is fantastic, the crowd got into it, we got that goal, so that, that we, you know, merited, but the, we really, I was just thinking, wow, this is pretty incredible, because don't be fooled by West Ham's position, they, when they get the guys back, they're only about signing Sammy and Nasri now, obviously, yeah, I don't know, they, um, they're going to fit them in, how's it going to fit them into their Saturday, squad? Yeah. With, within three minutes at kickoff Saturday, it could have been one all. yeah, Fabianski's made that brilliant save yeah. for Mounier's header and then Arnautovic he's gone through yeah. and I'm just thinking goal 
You know, with and it's someone, great to say be lost, someone else who've given well. some stick in the last few weeks was Jonas Lawson. I thought he was back to being really good on, yeah, well, on Saturday. Excellent. So it looked like he screwed it wide from South Stand, but it was a good was save, it, yeah, wasn't it? When you look at it, because it, it, he kind of he got his angles all right, didn't he? And yeah. that and pushed him a bit out wide. Yeah. But I must admit, it was a sinking feeling, wasn't it? When you looked at him and he was through, I thought the flag get up. It was right him. in front of us, and it was just like when oh. Harry Kane went through last season for Spurs. You think, you know, I thought we were going to score, and I thought we nailed on goal, and it was brilliant save, and then. Two and a half minutes later, whatever it is, so we'll Richard talk. At other end, one nil. So we'll talk about Mounier and we'll I'll fire some stats in before we do. So the obligatory weekly stats. Alex Pritchard was the first Huddersfield player to score at home in the Premier League in 726 minutes since Tomins against Watford in April. Pritchard's first goal for Huddersfield since his home debut. Huddersfield haven't scored more than once in any of their past 22 Premier League games, netting just nine in total in that run. And here's here's one which I thought was quite interesting was. It's Jonathan, I think this is very loosely termed as an assist because I thought Alex Pritchard did brilliantly to control a ball which was battered at him from three yards. We'll but, take it. <laughs> but Huddersfield's Jonathan Hogg registered his first league assist in 112 appearances since setting up goals for Huddersfield against Bolton in the Championship in December 2014. But that's not his forte, so that's not no. something to have a go at Jonathan Hogg with. Absolutely not, no. So, a man in the mood on Saturday. Uh, I thought he was excellent as well. Uh, Steve Mounier, from the first minute, he just looked at it. He was he was charging, you know, he, he charges around, but he doesn't do it in the same manner that Depoitre does in that manic kind he don't of do, way. He doesn't do headless charging. No. He, he cuts off, he, he cuts off, as you'll call them, passing lines, etc. It's it, it's, a, it's sensible closing down that he does. He's not going to go tear ass and have to summit that's a pointless exercise. There's an agenda against Money and Neil, and it absolutely. does my absolute head. I was at a, a junior football game on, on uh, Saturday morning and I heard some people in the club house, oh, you're off to the town. Yeah, that Money will be starting. In the... I don't get what it is. I don't get what it is. And I think you might be a bit the nail on the head there, Neil. I think traditionally, town fans have always liked to send a forward who's, you know, kind a of. A clatterer. Yeah, a clatterer. And this guy, yeah, okay, he's got, you know, zero goals for us, but. He clattered someone. Why, why waste your energy? Yeah. Especially in the Premier League, though. You know what I mean? It's just like, to me, yeah. I, d- I just don't get it. And I totally agree with what he said on, on Saturday. I thought he were absolutely fantastic. And to me, if we still say we didn't, couldn't get any you know, strikers in January, I think once we've got more chance of staying up with Steve Mooneyhead leading the line than Lauren de Poitre. Absolutely. And we're not decrying de Poitre. We're just saying that for us, the preference would always be Mooneyhead over de Poitre. I'm, I'm, Look, he's got, he's got his. There are things Mounier could do better. We're not going to sit here and say he's perfect, are we? That you know, he's gone through one on one with Fabianski, and he should have cut in on his left foot to open the goal yeah, up. Sure he didn't. Did. He went down his right. He didn't. Case okay, Second half, well, maybe he, he could have done better. Target. What a ball by yeah, Congolo, target, though. Yeah. What a ball by Congolo through yeah. where he's, he's kind of fell on a bit, but it's just kind of crept a bit. I watched that back at the time at the ground. You thought, what are you doing, Mounier? But when you watch it back, it just jumps in front of yeah. him, and it gives him a bit of a hard thing. So. I thought it was great. We all thought it was great. Get off his back. And all, all these who moan about him and moan about him in ground very vocally as well. I, d- I don't understand what people think they're gaining. This mm. lad is young. He's what is he, 21, 22? 23, I think. So he's, he's a young lad. Because he's going to fact check. Foreign country. We've been through all this before about him getting burgled and all that business, but. You know, he's, he's still learning his trade, but he's a very, very good centre forward. He is. I mean, yeah, nine goals last year might not sound the right lot, but in the, when they happened, they were massive. You know, the game against Brighton, obviously the Palace, well documented. They were kind of defining goals, defining games, and things like that as well. But uh, yeah, I, I'm really pleased. We, yeah, uh, you know, it's really I had to be pleased like a striker who scored. No goals. There was an interesting interview today in the Yorkshire Post where a few quotes from him and that as well. And uh, the one thing that made me laugh was says, I'm sure I will score some. And in a bit of banter, he was kind of saying, of course, I will. I cannot spend a season without a goal. I'm a striker. Come on. You know, so yeah. like, it's good that. And it's not yeah, like, like kind of mentally weighing him down. This is good. And we're, we're not saying much. that we don't want him to score goals and we're happy for him not to score goals. Of course, we want him to score goals. If he starts scoring, we stay up. It's as simple as that. But sometimes people who've got the, the sort of agenda against him have just got to watch a game like Saturday in exclusivity from rest of the season and say, yeah, lads had a bloody good game and move on. Yeah, yes, that's exactly. You know, I'm, I'm sat here. I've, I've been critical of Alex Pritchard in the past. I can sit here and, and be objective and say, look, he was great, especially in the first half on Saturday. And 
I think more people. I'm not saying that I'm the beacon of Huddersfield Town fans, etc. But I think more people need to kind of look at games in isolation, and, and, and it's okay to say he had a bad game there, but it doesn't make him a bad yeah. player. He no. had a good game there, yeah. doesn't make him a great player. You know, just don't don't get yeah, too up and down. The one. Yeah. Um. So Rory Benson is a, an examiner journalist. Uh, he's one of the better ones, thankfully. Yeah, well, we'll talk. We'll talk. We don't mind talking about examining how that whop has been sacked. <laughs> he. <laughs> he <laughs> Blake the Snake. So they he put some stats out about Steve Mounier, and I think, Neil, even you may find these interesting, uh, in that Steve Mounier won 15 aerial battles on Saturday. Uh, the next closest was Fabian Balbuena, who won five uh, for West Ham. Only Sam Vokes, 90 out of 160, has won more headers than Mounier. It's 82 from 141 challenges in the Premier League, but the town man's win percentage of headers is higher, which makes him the highest... Um, which essentially makes him the best he- header of a ball in aerial challenges in the Premier League. Let's be honest, and this will get shouted down on Twitter and fill your boots, reply to me by all means, but if Mounier's playing in a better team than Huddersfield Town, a lot of these headers that he's winning, knock-ons, knock-downs, etc., are being punished. Oh, man, I don't have much to say. I've, I, I've been more disappointed... And again, I don't like bagging players, but kind of to me, Aldi Potter seems to have gone a little bit backwards, really. And I blame myself for that. I remember the Leon game. I know, friendly, what have you, but he took that goal really well and he looked mean and sharp. And But, you know, we could point to, I don't, again, we don't want to bag him too much, but there's a lot of games where he's, you know, where his strength is in the air. We've seen well, you know, let's bad Let's be honest, that the chance that he's had late on on Saturday. Wow, that. To not even get a hold no, on it. That that Come shows on. where he's at at the moment for me, Neil. Yeah. Just just do he something on that as well. Like, I can't boo was, uh, that, was someone, a, that was another great ball by Congolo as yeah, well. Who was summarising the game on Sky Sports? I think it was, uh, oh God, what's the name? The guy, MK Dons, uh, the Irish guy, Blackburn. Oh, Keith, Keith Andrews. Yeah, he yeah, was really excited. He says, he says, yeah, that's got to be a goal. There's got to be scoring there. You know, and it's just like, yeah. yeah you... That's, that's just that fox in the box, Neil. You know, I know it's yeah. going back and you in the play, but a Jordan Rose, that... A, I think a, all we're in, asking for, basically, in, is people have a little bit of balance. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be all about one and all about the other. We can all happily get behind both of them. And if you're going to be... Give criticism, just do it constructively and in a manner that's not too scathing. And like we say, just pick a game, game on game. Let's not do it over... A period of time. We all know he needs to score goals. Lad himself knows he needs to start scoring goals. But on its own, on Saturday, as a as a as a performance, it's a is a goal short of a ten out of ten for me, Saturday. I thought it was midfield three again were ca- picked on from where they did Phenomenal. a follow. Just kicked on again. Yeah. They were fantastic in that they as were. well. I mean Moyes had a cool that beautiful bald head just heading that ball away. <laughs> it was a beautiful sight. And he was so casual. I must yeah, admit, well, you know, like you see stuff happening live, you think this is a goal, whatever. I thought that's a goal. Yeah. I don't. I thought everyone else said. I thought with the squad again. Yeah. I, when they just edited it out, yeah. we're like, wow, fantastic. Yeah, well, Mr. Casual. So speaking of fantastic, one thing, Cosy, that you think is fantastic is VAR. Um, I think most of us on Saturday didn't understand what David Wagner was on about when he said yeah. we should have had a penalty, and but we've seen it back on. I think it's the only match of the day that shows it. If you wanted to see it, it's about one hour, ten minutes in, if you don't want to watch the rest of that. And didn't Lineker say they were going to come back to it, Matt? You said, and he never did. Uh, yeah, Neil said that, but I think, he, I think he referred to David Wagner saying we don't get much luck, and then I think he discussed the lack of luck I that thought, we got. I thought it was just exclusively about the pen. Yeah. Either way, it still didn't get mentioned again, which it should have done. If, that, it, had been, if it had been one at top. The sky highlights like, never got yeah, mentioned, no idea, it? Right? Yeah. So are you guys saying that's a penalty, do you think? Penya, all day long. Yeah. It's like so the, annoying. because the, 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 the look that we're not getting at the moment, if it, if it does even itself out over a season, that's, we are going to get Yeah, when you belters. think about that World Cup that we watched and we were getting, we were seeing stuff that we'd never seen before, like people were getting dragged down in the box and the penalties were being given, like we yeah. were like, get in there as long well, as it's we consistent. Got, we, we got a couple against yeah. Panama, didn't we? Yeah, we? and it's all stopped again. Yeah, it's it's all stopped. Yeah, it was ridiculous. It would have shoved all day long. Yeah, and the trouble is because the game kind of quickly... Developed down the other end, it kind of we didn't really reflect on it. Like right. if it was somebody were taken out or what have you, so frustrating. But and just because yeah. it's not blatant mm. to the eye there mm. and then, don't make it mm. not a penalty. I think what we're interested. Referee's got a cracking view. Wagner called it, didn't he? And he was quite telling that 
on this interview because we've seen obviously other penalties that we've discussed here that we should have had. And he never, in fact, they never really were very vocal on that. No. But he was very vocal on yeah, this. It's well. almost like he had a great view or he's seen some VT footage or what yeah. have you. But it, it got me thinking, wow, when's this? And yeah, when I saw the replay, like everyone else. Well, to and, fair, when you watch it yeah. back, all you end up with oh. is Zanka doing his best Tim Clark impression, sat on his oh, ass with his hands in his hand. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's so frustrating. But God, we sound like we're just like mourning. It's just frustrating. Oh, man, but... it just won. When when they're playing, arguably better than last season for me, although table and points tally don't tell you that, I think we're a better team this season. And when you're just getting all this stuff that just seems, I don't like saying unfair, because you sound like you're a bit of a crybaby, but it's unfair, were that, it? <laughs> were, that, were that first half the best we've played in the Premier League? And it's a big call, because... Yeah, you think money that, but then you think, well, hang on a minute, we had about 20% possession. Yeah. To control that and on front foot football, yeah. I think we're the only thing that goes against it is that Nartovic, you know, kind of chance that we give away. And, and But to, but to I me. I tell you what, I'd much I, rather yeah. see us playing the old, you know, the new say now is on the front foot in it. I'd much rather see us like that at teams, in the faces, getting at them, great. and, and giving support. odd chance away yeah. at other end. But playing like how we do like that. We look a good side yeah. and nobody... I mean, looking at home games, we, you've just mentioned it off air, haven't you? Look, the yeah. home games we've got coming up... Wow. I'm not saying you're rubbing yeah. your hands because you've got to win them. They're not easy. No, it's slightly worried. It's just that early yeah, goal, but, isn't it? And it just it ignites it, doesn't it? And if Anatovic has gone in and, and, and things can be different, but it's just like how the, the game changed. But to me, we're just... Well, the players were just a lift off when Pritchard yeah. scored and that as well. And, they were uh, absolutely bouncing. Yeah, they were unbelievable. It was interesting what you said as well off of any of that. You, the West Ham, their support that came away, they must be like a kind of a members or whatever. It doesn't seem to yeah. me that they're many go on general sale. No. And we, I'm right by the divide where the West Ham fans were. And they went absolutely mental. Like I've never seen before, there were guys get, jumping on there with like the yeah. Burberry hats and stuff and giving it. Yeah. And I just sucked up. I thought. Fair play, boys. That is what football is yeah, all is, about. Yeah. They were giving it some big time. And you said a really comment good. which was really interesting. You've never seen an away following in the Premier League go as I am. nuts they went as that. absolutely mental. The, the, the only one that's challenged that for a celebration away and when Palace were here last season. Yeah. But that game were massive, wasn't it? That were a right... In the Premier League, I can pointer. remember badly that Billy Sharp winner for Leeds when he jumped the crowd. I don't want to kind of discuss that. But the Premier, I, I can't remember such a kind of... A, it was that one on Saturday. They yeah. went absolutely mental. But you know what? It's always them goals that ricochet. So frustrating, wasn't it? Because pinball, we've got that someone got who got the block in. There, uh, there, were, two, there were a couple, so, of, a couple blocks of blocks in. Couple of blocks then. The Mossel got down. Yeah. And it, oh, oh, it was like... Oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna pull you up on that Billy uh, Sharp one. I thought that was the most tepid derby we've ever had. That one and probably the meekest no, the celebration. celebration though. Yeah, I thought it was meek. Yeah, they didn't stand though. Well, they didn't all... stand like that. Mm. and went nuts. But I thought it was quite quiet from them. Move on from them, but yeah, I just it's, it was just again. Do we blame his luck? But pinball ball just disappear from our goal. It comes to a yeah. man who's got forty-two million who's really playing well this season, yeah. and it's in. Why, yeah. God, it... If it forced to like your Antonio's come on, it's yeah, in back at exactly. stand, isn't it? Oh. Well, he, he hit it just before. Yeah. Yeah, he's <laughs> the one that yeah. went for a throw-in. Yeah, well, so, he, had, yeah. he hit the uh, shot just before Anderson did as well. What I did like, though, at Town's response. Blocked. Yeah. Because we didn't panic. After that, there it went no, offline. Yeah, no, that were, were only thing, because we did win it. We did wobble after that. But we had another... We, we went again. Yeah, we did. We went we at them again. We went, went another couple of good chances, isn't it? Yeah. It would just... Because he nailed it, it would just a belting yeah. game of football from start to yeah. mean, You come away from that, mm. you're disappointed that we haven't won, but if you come away from that and thought, that's not a good game or somebody haven't played well, it's really not I the game for good, you. I think it's a good point, Neil. I, I said that kind of in the post-match thing after that. I think we'll wake up, it's a good point. And yeah, maybe we should have won the counter-arguments for both sides. Could but have lost, yeah, I West Ham are only going to get better, mate. They're not saying Sammy Nazi just to finish 14, <laughs> no. so... So that we'll look back on that, and the, I think West Ham will do a lot of damage in, in other games. I think they'll be yeah. good, but I think we'll probably look back at that. I think, do you know what? We could, we should really have won that game. You're always going to get them, yeah. though, but hopefully, but when Moyes be a couple, edit, when yeah. all this luck turns right yeah. way, mm. we're, we're going to get the some, only thing I'd some say about, decisions, aren't we? The only thing I'd say about their goal is I thought it was quite preventable earlier on. In terms of where, well, yeah, there were guys off. diving. Our right off. back yeah. sold, himself. He sold yeah. himself. He sold himself easily square on, which has meant Hogs had to come across. 
So Hogs come across to track Felipe Anderson, which means Snodgrass yeah. is completely unmarked as he runs down yeah. the flank. And yeah, Flo. I know a bit, managers. A bit Flo, Flo's had a bit of a mare on Saturday, if I'm being honest. I know managers concentrate on their own team and stuff, but I was a bit disappointed with Pellegrini's interview mm. afterwards. He didn't really give us much praise hear. and that. I yeah, he were all about they didn't play well in the first half. Oh, he doesn't it. Yeah, I suppose. He's won Premier League before, and he so yeah, getting the point where it was with him is probably not the greatest result. But yeah, he's a very laid back kind of character in that. I take stuff like that with a pinch of salt. I mean it's very mm. very rare that we get a manager from opposition giving us any credit whatsoever there's only Klopp in there and that's only, yeah, there's only huge Klopp. we got some out of the game because as we saw earlier on Cardiff that were a, just watching that in a bars before a game that were frustrating really speaking of that. luck yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah thanks Dale Stevens. yeah what a yeah well, he hasn't changed has he no he hasn't at all but you know what we're interesting I I Look, I typed in Dale Stevens on Twitter like I do, a bit of a saddle. And there were other teams saying that this guy's got previous. So when I put my picture on with Adam Hamill, there were other guys that. Yeah. So this guy's got previous, but yeah, there were a near inevitability once he no, went off. There's no need that. for it, I don't yeah. know. Shouldn't have been a goal, that Bamba one, though, should it? At the no. end? I'm all for hard little get about your players in mid look pitch. Yeah. We've got one ourselves and we love him. Yeah. But he wouldn't. He doesn't do that. He wouldn't do that. He wouldn't, nah, nah. He wouldn't, do that. He wouldn't he take somebody out half on guys. Shit. He just sticks nut on them, doesn't he? Yeah. <laughs> 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 it's a rock bottom, was that? If you ever watched wrestling in the nineties, yeah. What a man. Uh, right. So we'll finish off the West Ham game with um, we opened uh, the Man of the Match award up to Twitter because there were so many good performances on on Saturday. I couldn't fit them all onto uh, onto the poll. Twitter only gives you four options instead of. Five or six, which I wanted, and that caused a bit of an argument. Nine or ten on Saturday. Yeah, the BBC gave the Man of the Match award to Philip Billing. The sponsors, I believe, gave it to Alex Pritchard. They did. Um, who would you give it to, Cosy? Oh, so I'm going to stop you there. I've just read a bit more of that Mooney interview. You mentioned about his shot, and I thought he did well there. And he said, yeah, that second one, I did not make a good choice. He said, I shot at the first post, and I should have shot to the other side. You haven't read this map, have you, before? No, I haven't, no. I made a bad choice on that one, but he saved it as well. So Yeah, well, that, that was my point. I just he'll thought, learn. I yeah, just thought yeah. he should have taken it to his he left should. side, but it's probably well, not as comfortable. He'll, he'll learn. I'm a Pritchard fan, mate, and uh, I just thought it was... Uh, I just I'd love to see a guy running themselves into the ground. I know it's a gimme and, you know, in a Guagna team. I thought but, 11 did that, to be fair. Yeah, so but I mean, at the end, great. he just had not... Like you said, Neil, when he went out wide, you know, that ch- kind of chance when he, were, he had to go out wide. He, had, he was like staggered about like kind of a drunk coming out. Yeah. Probably like I want on Saturday yeah, leave, leaving Huddersfield about 11 o'clock, but... I think re- I'd give him a room singing. for his money at that stage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, absolutely yeah, fantastic. For me, he was our better player best player for me in that as well not just for Scott but I just I just the energy and what he brought I thought it really really good I find it really hard to split top two or three performers on Saturday I think outstanding performances Pritchard first half Chris Lover were phenomenal again unfortunate to get injured glad it's not as bad as we first thought but I'm going to stick my neck out and I'm going to go Mounier I'll tell you what was interesting though with that Pritch- obviously yeah sorry the Injury, but I th- the first half I thought Adage and I were that kind of similar to Lover. He was down for a bit, weren't he? And I thought, yeah. wow, he's done his. But <laughs> as the irony, bad irony, while well, we had it later on, and it was uh, Lover and that yeah. as well. It was almost like fate would come and someone's going to go off on a yeah, stretcher. It, yeah. it, yeah. it, it was horrible sight, which always is when stretchers get great wrong. news, though, isn't it? Because even Wagner kind of were writing him off. It felt to me for yeah. a long time. So for it, you know, to come back like that. So reeling you back in. <laughs> I was going to say, <laughs> where are we now? Are we, are we all man at match, Matt? Uh, my man of the match was, I, I, I looked at it, and I thought our midfield three put in a 90-minute performance. I thought Alex Pritchard was fantastic for 40, but second half, not not really. I thought he worked hard, but in terms of on the ball, it wasn't really his game, so I, I couldn't put him in. Um, for me, I couldn't really split Hog, Moy and Billing, but I'd probably just nudge it towards Hog. Which shows you then. It what an all round good performance, good performance it was because you've gone Og, I've gone Mooney here, because he's gone Pritchard, and like you say, there's good shouts for another three, four players. So I've opened it to Twitter, which is always our favourite because we love to hear from people. Apart from when it's like Dean Ball who says Mbenza was the man of the match. So thanks for that, <laughs> Dean. <laughs> I think it was that fresh air shot, wasn't it, which which sealed oh, that one. He actually put a shot as wide to left side that he put to right side against Fulham, didn't he? <laughs> Had a better shot in the gas club, mate. The shocking, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Terps. <laughs> uh, 
Tanzanian Terrier um, says a difficult choice. Certainly Hog, Moy and Billing were equally outstanding and close to call, which is similar to what I've said. Um, sadly, I couldn't fit Billing on the Man of the Match thing. I felt quite bad afterwards, but me and you, I think three of us checked, didn't we? And Cosy yeah. was quiet because he was working, but me and Neil thought Moy was slightly ahead of Billing, only just. Um, Huddersfield Town 1908, Town Ter- at Town Terrier thought Millie- Billing was the Man of the Match. Um, Steve Silent, Alex Pritchard, uh, backed up by HTFC Images. Uh, Chris Taylor says, tough choice. Munir for me worked hard, so he's back to you up there, Neil. Correct. Not saying the well, others didn't, um, but he won the most aerial duels. Worked, uh, linked well with Pritchard. The, the flick, I think Danny mentioned it last week, and he was saying when, when we're not bagging Departure, but when Departure wins a header, it's just to flick it on. When Munier wins a header, he's guiding it to people, and I thought that was really mm. noticeable um, on Saturday. Uh, so... Baggy Penguin, I'm not, I'm not sure what kind of, <laughs> kind of one that is. Um, Belting name, not in boing, it. boing, that's the uh, theme yeah, of the weekend, that's, isn't it? That's why yeah. I looked, I was like, Baggy <laughs> Penguin. Uh, he says, Pritchard, for me, movement on the ball was brilliant, which I, I agree with. Took his goal well, just a shame his tank was empty later in the game, which pretty much what you've said there as well, Cos. Uh, Malky says, Billing, and how dare you include that lazy non-scoring, I'm just joking. I think the best thing with Billing, I mean, if you've got to remember the Everton game, I mean, we, we kind of called that out as maybe a, a defining moment in his town career. Wasn't it? Yeah, and he's kicked on. He do, does it every week. He's now. kicked on. This is great. It does worry me with January. And He's a presence. You know, and I've noticed, I sent something to you on forums that always, you know, debate, debatable, but the Palace one, and yeah, mm. the, whether they can sign him is another matter, but the fact he's caught their eye. That says it all that, you know, people are noticing yeah. Philip Billing. And I think the thing is, though, mate, because he takes a long throw and there's not many people do that. People's like, hang on a minute, this guy has something on Can he do any good? Because I remember that challenge guy at Top Cham here, you know, going oh, back. Yeah. But he could. They were like them, though, he couldn't play, they? though, could he? No, with, oh, God, if he listed. They were but, yeah. But, Richard Logan's one armed throw yeah. was always a yeah. better as well. But the yeah. Gainsborough's finest. But <laughs> Billing's turning heads, not just in Uddersfield. So, yeah, keep it up, Phil. Lads yeah, a player. Well. Fantastic. It, it, it's not going to be long before he's in full day and he's squad with Oslo and Zanke. I love him out, lads, call him the Eiffel Tower, don't they, on their Instagrams. <laughs> Latouri fell, they always put the other. <laughs> Remember as well, Swansea came in with a big bid for Billy not so long since as well, so yeah. obviously his potential is noticed he's, he's in a, football circles. And, and if, you, if you're looking at what players are going for now, he's probably, you're starting at 15, aren't you? More, How long has he been with us? Uh, Tell me, he's been with us for a good. It must be seven, eight years. Sixteen. Now. He's been with us since he was sixteen, so that would be. What is it? Twenty-one now. Ross Wilson. This is quite a good story. I oh, probably mentioned it. On, years. Yeah, I mentioned it on yeah. previous podcasts where Ross Wilson went to a game, and yeah, we were, we were and he game, yeah he went to watch a different game and turned round and there was a game on the field behind and there was this big midfielder yeah. dominating the game and that's and he was well, spotted by accident. Mm. I well, still I love that Nottingham Forest moment. I know a card if we'll get mentioned, but yeah. I will be on that goal that day. What a... Forest one counted, though, we won. Yeah. Card if we bloody lost him. I, I, I love the... They put the kind of videos out, didn't they? The, uh, remember when we were at Championship, didn't they? But it said, just said, keep the keep the receipt, didn't it? Billing, I, I love that. It was brilliant. Yes. One of his one of his best goals was... Or what technically one of his best goals was in the under-21s against Nottingham Forest away. And it hit it from about 25 yards and it hits the crossbar. It's an absolute rocket. Yeah. Hits the crossbar, bounce down, whacks the crossbar again, bounce down, and then goes in well, the roof. Well, remember when he scored with it Reading in Championship promotion season? Good and finish. It came, it came yeah. across six yard box, and it was coming up at him high. But because he's so big, he managed to still get his foot over, and he just kept it under by when it roofed it. Net. I've said it before. I did, again, I've done it before when I did some of that Radio York stuff and did stuff with Eddie Gray. I'm going to mention his name here, but good guy. And uh, he, he, said, he just said, <laughs> Philip Billing, player. That's all he said, yeah. player. He yeah. didn't. He didn't you don't give much, much praise to players, so yeah, when someone's like that saying it, mate. If he, do, if he yeah. does go, it'll be a lot of money. Yeah. And there'll be a lot of people going, oh, he's never, we've done great there, he's not worth that. He is. He looks like he's enjoying his football yeah, now, he yeah. yeah. He's really good. It, it actually looks like, eventually, the penny has dropped. Because yeah. he's got all the ability yeah. to be whatever he wants to be. Yep. Joe, just to finish those things, John Lamb says, Pritchard for me, but Hogs passed that nearly got Moy in. He's put some love hearts there. Joseph McGregor, not sure what, not sure. There's a wrong answer there. It's Pritchard for me, if only because of the balls he kicked towards the goal actually went in. I'm not accustomed to that. <laughs> <laughs> Richard Crowther, Pritchard first half, but second hand, second half let himself down a bit. A bit harsh, Richard. Uh, Alfie Kennedy. Formation change. Yeah, I think it was that. Which, uh, you know, he's too, he's too far away from everyone. But 
Alfie Kennedy says, wouldn't give it Pritchard at a great first half, but was very poor in the second, but he's put had to be hog. I think poor's harsh. Again, we're going to say formation changes made like a bit more so. isolated we're, we're, than anything. There's three of us here, we've, we've all picked somebody different. Mm-hmm. That, that, that great performance, good team performance. I think I think we could be really happy with that. You want to be worried when you're walking away and you're all going, well, it's so-and-so, isn't it? And, and, one man, and you've only got one man to pick. And one man that can be really happy is our Australian listener, Ian Kilroy, who's just seen a really good performance with a back three. You know, if it can be uber critical, again, I could be shot down here, but same with the Fulham West Ham. We, do you think it's just because we put so much into the the first half that it's impossible? Plus, the opposition's obviously got a lot of quality that we can't just keep it going. Because again, it just felt a bit like Saturday. I'm kind of thinking West Ham are going to come back here, and they really did. But I suppose when you think about what they're bringing on and chicory, I mean, we didn't really discuss that chance, and I, I, I just got nipped at Lou with that, and I had this oh, and I thought, oh, God, we're so we're, lucky how it yeah. got to him. So that's the kind of look we don't get. Should have scored with that header though, shouldn't they? A man of his calibre. Probably should. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we've got away yeah, with that. Definitely. I remember yeah. him scoring with the back of his head once for Man United. And did, them yeah. raging, uh, not raging, but absolutely raving about it on match. Did you see his dive though later on? Eh? What about his yeah, dive? Yeah. I think I missed that. I didn't. And then yellow awful. card. It was nah, ridiculous. It's awful. But that don't get picked up on match at day. No, it don't get a yellow. Cause, nothing. Cause it's West Ham. Yeah. That's not Huddersfield Town, is it? It's not new. Yeah, it's not. So Cosy, that's that's West Ham game talked about. But before the game. Um, the HTSA and the Cowshed Loyal placed some leaflets in the south stand where you were situated. Yeah, I kind of think, uh, I mean, just even before that, I thought what the club did was just perfect, I suppose, with the remembrance. I thought that were fantastic. I don't know about you, but when the last post is paid, played, it's it's proper solemn moment and that as well. And I just thought we did everything right with that. I thought the TIFO was really, really good in the Kilner Bank. I did... I just thought everything was really good about it and that as well. The only thing that kind of I didn't mention it was a bit of a weird thing. When I've seen these last posts played before, you have a two minute silence afterwards when I've always been at the rugby. Now, I don't know whether, because I don't, to be fair, I think some of the West Ham fans, you know how it is in a concourse, they were had a beer and they were coming. You could hear the noise from the background, so as usual, yeah. show up and, that, and all that. And that started to get a bit audible. So that, it was weird, really. I thought we were going to have a minute silence. And I think the... The, the guys on the field as well did so they kind of stood there that was all a bit weird but I thought it really good and what we did and yeah it got a bit of national recognition that so it should the club are really good at doing stuff like that and then yeah uh, the stuff that was on the seats from the uh, the Cal Shed Law and I think in association with the HTSA were absolutely fantastic for me I tweeted the kind of back the other day for, for me some people it might just be about whether we win or lose on a Saturday or on Tuesday or whenever we're playing in that as well but I like to believe that a club represents me and my values and when I'm seeing the kind of things about mental health issues and that as well and there's so many young kind of adults especially kind of in the the car shed the south south stand they might pick up we you might get someone there who's going to pick that up and kind of just think wow you know I might have a problem here or I might get help but you might think, well, why should they care about that? They've got the banners, their jobs to get behind the team. I think it's it's becoming more than that. You've seen the food banks. I just love the way we. you said something, Neil, saying I bet we'll probably get a bit of stick for that Remembrance Day. But everything we see to do is done with a bit of class and good intentions. Yeah. I think they didn't do... Uh, I read rightly that the car shed law had a, a whip round the side it against a, uh, some banners and then they put £100 in the... Uh, I think, was it Remembrance Fund? I could be. Yeah, yeah, like that, yeah. And that as well. But just I just thought that were absolute class. I'm, I'm picking this leaf and thinking, wow, this is kind of bigger than football. And and it should be, though. Your football club should be all about your community. And I, I some of the fans, I feel a bit sorry for them because they've not got that. They've not got that. And we mentioned the Leicester that, you know, uh, sadly, Mr. Vishai, the kind of the week, he seemed to be the guy like that. And when I saw that on Saturday, I've gone on a bit about it, but he just, to me, it means a lot to me, does that, though. That is, that is just what I, I walk out I think, thinking, I think it resonates with about. a lot of people, yeah. to be honest. And be a lot of people that won't talk about things and have got issues. Um, and for Cowshed Law and HSA to, to come up with that idea in the first place, never mind actually follow it through. But for somebody to actually use that as an idea and to push that in a football ground where there's probably a lot of people in there who are silently suffering or whatever and for them to sort of open that door for somebody. They might, if, if one person has picked up that leaflet in that uh, cow, in cow shed on Saturday and read it and followed through with it and done something about it, 
worth it, isn't it? It is. We've got such a class, so when it really gets on my goal, well, what does the town bring in the Premier League? You know, idiots, you know, like we get Moose and Jason Cundy. I'll tell you what, boys, have a look at that, mate, because we're more than a club. I know it's a cheesy thing. Barcelona have got that. We're more than a club. We're more than about what happens Saturday. We're more than about, you know, what do you call them, consumers. We're like proper, the lifeblood of the community. We'll be there, whatever division we're in and that as well. And, and I just it all think, started yeah, when Dean Oil walked Dean in. Dean there. So that, beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Just want to kind of leave it at that there, but I'm mega proud and, and yeah. that's because I must admit, I didn't, know that this were going to happen. Obviously, I knew about the Remember stuff. That got, were very visible. Yeah. But I picked up one of these leaflets. I thought, wow, this is absolutely amazing. So if, I think that the perfect way to end that really is that on this leaflet, there was a number of different places where if you are suffering with mental health, you can reach out to. Um, it's on the HTSA's Twitter feed if you want to look at that. But there are places such as NHS uh, 111, uh, the Single Point of Access Team, IAPT Kirk Lees, uh, the Samaritans Support to Recovery, Andy's Man Club, Calm Mind, Alcoholics Anonymous, Narcotics Anonymous, and Women's Centre as well, uh, which would all be able to help somebody. And There's also one for people who are only on Twitter and what have you that um, actually, if you follow Freddie Cocker on Twitter, he started off a great organisation called Vent. And if anyone wants to follow that on Twitter, at Vent, I think it's at, is it at Vent Help UK? Vent Help UK, yeah. It was just a shame that. Get followed. We, everything that we've done read, on and off the pitch, up, we just couldn't get them three points because everything was brilliant about the day, the <coughs> match. puts a smile on everybody's face. Yeah, absolutely. But then when you take stock, four points, and again, yeah. you kind of look at where the table's heading. I've come away from yeah. Saturday and I've yeah. thoroughly enjoyed that. Yeah. That's what it's all about. I'm still, I'm still buzzing a little yeah. bit from the game. I yeah. watched. I even downloaded the full 34 minute highlights on Sky and watched them all, yeah. and I enjoyed it. <laughs> yeah. I actually, I didn't speed through it. I didn't. I really enjoyed it. It's right. a game of football, and I haven't done that for for but, a while. No, it's like Cosy said. We, it is proudly more than just a football club. It has, and it and, goes yeah. so much. Well, look at the ninety you, minutes on yeah, a Saturday. The, the bike ride again that's happening. Yeah, the, you know, in the new the year, old club, it, it started when Dale walked in yeah. door. And it's all sort of spreading from mm. there. And club back everything, which is even better. We haven't got a club where you can't do that. That's a bit too the, political, this or mm. PC. That what would mean as much to me, Neil, if we didn't, you know? Because, no, no offence, but you could have like a kind of billionaire owner who just like wants to just bankroll or a sealed. It probably never happened, probably never will do. But that would mean a, as a much to me. A billionaire he might do for in, some, in, not for me. He's chairman who's, yeah. wanting, who's wanting all yeah. Premier League clubs to, to gift. Scooed them or a quarter yeah. of a million pound. So when it comes Naff to January, off. mate, when it comes yeah. to January and people are saying, wow, Joke. we got 20 million on spending on that more pay at Brentford or whatever. Dino can do whatever he wants for me, mate, because you know what? I trust him with yeah. my life. Absolutely. Class filters down from the top. Yeah. 100%. And it has done from day one. I look forward to having Danny Willings back on our bench, mate. He's yeah, looked sharp again, hasn't yeah, he? Yeah, looks, looks ready, he doesn't looks, he? Yeah, he could come, you know, like 20 minutes to go, give us a real and, impetus and what and stuff. better time to get him back when other three yeah. are playing top draw? Because that is he's really going to have to be flying wow. to get to try and dislodge one of them. I know Instagram doesn't tell full stories of, of life, but there's no one seems to have worked harder in football no. to get back. I, yeah, I love the story where it's one tremendous. of the physios has taken over his Instagram and he's yeah. pestering yeah. him. I thought that was brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> it's really good. But you, you see both Williams and the, the other one who stands yeah. out for me when you see Instagram, who does no but work, 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 is Kachunga. Yeah. And I'd love to see it like back on the bench and getting a chance. And There's, there's quite a few calling for that. Yeah, the, competition the, yeah, for places on the bench, Neil. I think when you look at Sobby, nearly six... The Akabi just over seven, and Benza. Look at all obviously, on bench, Neil. obviously he's only on loan, but it's thirteen point yeah, five million wow. to trigger. Wow, let's hope they don't push that button yet. VLP, is it? Honestly, but you know, our bench. Yeah, Van der Parra's another strange Van der Parra's one. He was, he was ill, one. and he's not been on the bench. And I would have thought he'd have been on there because he's he's never really let us down as never. Van der Parra. We're Pat Red in a way where he got sent off for nah. having got the ref, but. Apart from he's, that, he's, he's uh, remedied it since then, hasn't he? Yeah, he's done more than enough. To but he's, um, there's, there's him and Kachunga, and as much as we've invested all this in new players in summer, them two are still in front of the other three for me. And I don't. It's not a great indictment, that is. No, it? it's well, it's quite damning, really, isn't it? Project players can take and play like we, we talked about Mounier. Players can take a while to get going, and fair enough that happens. The young lads, aren't they? But you see, when I, I see Benza come on. 
<laughs> find the words. Take the time. Take the time. You'll find the word. I just want to. Woosa. Woosa. I'm, I'm, I'm willing him. I'm willing him. Uh, there's something there. Because he Every pulled that. Then, I mean, he's a cracking there. shot. But it topped him at home. Yeah. And he just got it. And the ball, the ball put in as well. Corner. And you're thinking this this kid's got and it, it must it, he's got something it must have it must have but it's it's just not happening for him yet. And then but you watch him. Something needs to happen soon because. And you're watching 17 year olds from Fleetwood nip the ball off him because he's got a touch like a cement mixer. You're yeah. just going, what's what's going on yeah. here? What is? So I, I hope it works pure, out. We all do. Of course we do. Is it purely a confidence thing? Probably. I think I think confidence is probably the and key thing for a footballer <laughs> even above ability. So if you've got confidence, you're better than you are anyway, aren't you? So I, I just hope it comes good for him, but it's been a, it's been a rocky start to say the least. But the fact that he's on bench and getting on and dear cap is not even on bench sort of tells all the tale, doesn't it? Yeah, I'm not sure what's going on there, but which is not one really because he came on for about last minute and a half against Liverpool and got round back twice and got crosses that we haven't seen him since. He's a big like talk. Yeah, the guy is quick. The big talking point though and moving on from Scotty Malone's song to they've changed it to M. Benz. I, I don't like it mean, when they uh, just shoe on another name in and that. I know all songs are generic and I stuff, wondered who they were singing that about. Yeah. I, well. I, I, I didn't kind of fit as well, well but fit. yeah. Malone, sorry, Isaac Carl Shedlow. No, yeah. sorry. <laughs> no. Isaac and Benz are he's so, no, that doesn't. Yeah. I, I love the song but Maybe yeah, a bin it, lads. Bin yeah, it. Maybe a different player. <laughs> it scars, though. Get it back out. <laughs> yeah. To be fair, put nothing... it in an envelope and send it to Derby. Let them have it. No songs had more. Uh, <laughs> no, no songs had more uh, more players than the uh, Pavel Abbott one, though. Surely. No. Anyway, so I like Pavel Abbott. So from whoppers to weapons to satchels. We're going to do something a bit different this week, Neil, aren't we? And this is... I'm not sure about this at all, but we'll go with it. It's Tuesday night. It's Top of the Wops. In at number five, it's a big club mix by the top six propaganda apologist at Mustafi Magical, who covers a Willie Nelson classic of Vote Em Out, as he says that Player of the Month awards should never go to a Bournemouth or Brighton player despite how they play because they don't have enough fans to vote for them. What a whopper. In at number four, you spin me right round, Twitter right round like a broken record baby, right round, round, round. It's HJFC chat on his one-man crusade to disparage any contribution by Steve Mounier. What a whopper. At three, money's not too tight to mention for outgoing Premier League chief Richard Scudamore, as despite making over £26 million in personal earnings off the back of the Premier League, he has asked for a Premier League whip round of 250000 per club for a golden handshake on Whopperage well done. What a whopper. In at two, confidence is a preference for the habitual voyeur who is known as Charlie Austin. Morning memes can be avoided if you take a route straight through what is known as it's Charlie Wapstein with his interview outrage. Well, they said it's offside hit, might have hit, it twice hit me, Bob that, that's why Dan Foster. The best league in the world, the most watched league in the world. I give them all the help they need, because clearly it cost us two points a day. It's a joke. Before we got to bed, this week worked hard, come here to get three points. We deserve three points today, we let down by the officials, that's why we didn't get three points. And at number one, for a second week running, it's full glorious food. Hot off the local press on Whopperage as Talksport newsreader Ian The Moose Abrams was alleged to have been picked up slated at Lusfield Town Football Club for talking to local press and journalists and for that the club was a joke and deserves to be relegated from the Premier League. I'm afraid the only thing deserving of relegation is this absolute whopper towards a job centre. What a whopper. Is that it? Thank for that. I don't think you could do that again, could you? No. 
And that's in one take. Well done, Neil. So one take, everybody. I think that deserves a, a round of applause if you're in your car somewhere. Oh, <laughs> Don't no. take your hands off the steering wheel, though, if you're driving on the motorway. Uh, do we do we want to talk about any of this absolute insane whopperage? We've we've covered that. The stick Mooney gets. I'll tell you, is, is the biggest harsh, joke on all of them for me. I know we've we'll give it moose again for complete whopperage, but that story that's come out today about Skudamore, come on. 26 million quid he's earned. 26 million. 26 million pounds. And 43,000 And it's pounds. Chelsea chairman who was asking for a golden handshake for him. And he wants 5 million pounds. Yeah, sod off. What a load of that is, isn't <laughs> what it? What are you giving it then, Neil? Sure. <laughs> <coughs> See, <coughs> if they're going to do it, give, give him the money or donate the money and it's given in his name to grassroots football, a five million payout to grassroots football. So I agree make it a worthwhile, but he doesn't need five million quid. He doesn't deserve five million. Come on. What happened to getting a watch? Oh, I won't even give this guy a Casio. I won't even give him a taxi home. Nothing wrong with Casio, by the way. We've got a week off next week, boys, haven't we? Yeah, man. I think he needs it after that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. So, Wolves, down we, now. we need to preview your wolf. We need to preview Wolves, Neil. Now, Neil. Me and you were what? What seven hundred? What did we take on that infamous night to clinch our playoff spot? Seven hundred and something, wasn't it? Although you know what, I, I don't know what's been sold, but I know a lot of people that are going who I didn't think would be going. So maybe we're going to take more than we think. I hope so, but I'm not bothered either way. No, I'll just get ready for outrage on Twitter when the seven hundred of us sat there and all Leeds fans are going, "Wait, it's not my brilliant." Excellent what do you lads. think that that's going to be an interesting game? Because everyone's going to tune in expecting Wolves to give us a good kick in. I think they've they've bought into the. Super Nuno Sunday, Super Revolution, Sunday. yeah. I, I I like kind of games like this. We're, we're, a, good, can, we're, we're yeah. a good record at Wolves. Yeah, a very good record. I, I remember last time I went down for playoff clinch when Izzy Brown scored. Izzy Brown, yeah. I ended up sat on running track at side. At I, I saw you, mate. <laughs> I saw you doing it. It's an honourable. You're end, on the end though. of season video waving your crutches, yeah. isn't you? It's such an honourable away in that, and I hate it. You're so it's low nasty. down. Yeah, yeah. I nasty. mean, we were on moon, and then now we're underground. It's like shocking. Well, we, they give us front row because obviously. Which standing up job it kills me, but mm. they give us front row there, but there's nowhere to put your legs. No, there is literally no leg room at all, so it was pathetic, really. But yeah, me, me and Faz, me and Faz went and sat on running track at side at pitch. It's one of those that you let's be honest, if they play like anything like and we do, then they probably win. But I, I go down there, we again thinking we could nick one, maybe three. What I like about that game is even though we are massive underdogs. Which is ridiculous, and they've just come up. Mm. But looking at their squad and what have you, I think it's one of them where they'll really fancy. They'll, they'll think it's home win. Yeah, their fans are expecting yeah, home do. win. Yeah, their players are probably mm. expecting home win. I'm expecting a home win. Yeah, well, I think we're all expecting home win. But I think it's one of those where town could go and upset a few. And we, our record there, as I say, is very, very good. We should have a, a new kind of feature. Never mind Whoppers like uh, Wolves Corner. So some of my memories that infamous where we took. I think we took about 30 fans on that Saturday night time at a Chris Powell, that white shirt, Oof. that, uh, what it, Cavonia or whatever on it, with Jason Davison the getting Jason apps at Davison, Davison game. Masterclass. Horrendous, though. That that was a sobering afternoon. That that looked like Huddersfield Town were heading like, towards League Two stuff, did that? We were. Yeah. But I remember the Tuesday night before when Connor Cody and Chris Powell, the most <coughs> bizarre game, when again, I didn't think we took that many, but we ended up, I think, winning 3 0, was it? Yeah. Or something like that as well. We had a right now. Night, the, the, the one that stands three, out one. is when, when Beckford scored. Yeah, when we were say Beckford's yeah. chip down the middle. Yeah. The, unbelievable. It's so high, I can't well, remember yeah, seeing the, it. His record there has always been very, very good. Yeah. So I, I'm hopeful, mate. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I've, I've resigned from predictions, but I'm hopeful of a, of a positive outcome. There's something about a 4 pm Super Sunday game, is there? And last time we had, what, it, Manchester City? 4 pm, uh, and we give a good account of ourselves yeah, that day, did. didn't we? We were we really did. lucky. This Very is, unexpected. Everyone's as well. watching that game. I'm right looking forward to it. Yeah. Again, we'll get, oh, this field shouldn't be on you know, at 4 o'clock. You know, the snobbery. We've earned the right. Else. Yeah. Do you think well, I, there, we've earned the right. I think the break might be it's good for us, like Neil. It's council house advert then. It's right, though, isn't <laughs> yeah. it? We have earned the right. I think the break might be good. Well, break in inverted commas looking at some of them videos from Harp A, but I think it might not be a bad thing that, mate. We've put a lot of energy and gas into these last two games, haven't we? I think. With Lerva's injury as well, maybe he buys another week. It's, it's good. Yeah. It's good on that front. On a flip side, for me, it's they've just come off back of two really good home performances. Yeah. Let us just crack straight on on Sunday yeah. and get into them. Yeah. But 
because you've got to wait another day mm. then as well with it being yeah. Sunday, haven't you? Typical Newcastle the start starting to win a couple of games. Nah, as well, it is they? what it is. We're all just going to win a couple, won't yeah. they? It's just yeah. how it is. Yeah, they'll still be down there at the end of the season. Yeah, and I predict- have no doubt. I tell you, did anyone else see that? There were a little article last week about the. Well, I think we were discussing a little bit before where just they're saying the, the most unpredictable league in Europe, but it's total rubbish. You know, it was saying I think it was incredible stats. Something like played. They played like the top six and that, so it's like played 34, won 33 or something. Yeah. yeah. No one's beating anyone. It's like goals against Falcom. They were basically saying that football's just like eating itself with these kind of stats. And well, If, if you look that. at how it's going at minute with bottom five or six in our league, you could get away with, as it stands, about 26, 27 points to stop up. Yeah. That's how bonkers it is. I think it could be a record low. Yeah. It, I think it will be. I just think it's nailed on with how it is. I mean, let's be honest. We've won one in twelve. We should be cut off long since. Yeah, we're not even bottom. No, we're not even bottom. No. Cosy, I did a quick. Whilst you were talking there, I did a a quick check on soccer base on the head to head. So since we got promoted back to the the championship from, it wasn't the championship then, was it? It's to Division One from Division Two back in nineteen ninety five. Uh, we've been to Molyneux ten times. Can you guys hazard a guess at what our record is in that time? I love putting you on the spot. I remember when Marcus Stewart I scored a winner there. Yeah. Marcus Stewart scored a winner there. What, Neil, we played 10 times. Yep. How many wins are you going for? I'm going for five wins. Four Neil, draws. Neil, you said half, which is five. <clears throat> yeah. Have you have you done your, your research there, Cosy? Because no. it is five wins, four draws, one defeat wow. since 1995. Well, if we can keep that one defeat, we're in, for a, we're in for a good result, aren't we? We'll be buzzing again for the pod. Yeah. So we've got some decisions. Well, we don't have decisions, thankfully, to make. But the big man himself, Mr. Wagner, has got a decision to make because Zanker, I believe, is suspended. <coughs> and Chris and Chris Lerber's not going to be there either. And Chris so. Lerber. So one and one thing that I wanted to discuss was: is it time to bring back Tommy Smith <coughs> into the team? If it were me picking team for that game, I'd start Derm. Instead of Lerva, a straightforward, obvious one. And yes, I would go Tommy Smith on right hand side instead of Flo. Me too. I think you'll be have a point to prove as well. It sounds like champing a bit. You mentioned and kind yeah. of a something you witnessed in the other week where you know maybe you look frustrated guy. But yeah, why not? This is an opportunity, man. And as we've seen with Phil Billing, he's took his. Can Smith take his? I'd, I'd, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm careful not him. to make this sound like an agenda, but you guys know I'm not a big fan of Flo Hadders, you know, especially as a as a defender. For me, we've got three right backs, and Eric Derm's the best one. Tommy Smith is the second one, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, as an out and out defender, Tommy if, Smith. If, if the Lerber, only thing is the pace. Yeah, you're right. But it, if Lerber's not got injured, it's Lerber and Derm for me. No, I agree side. with that. Yeah, hundred percent. But with Lerber being out, it's got to be Derm left and I, I would give Tommy Smith a shout now I think I think his I think his time has he's waited patiently he's still getting on bench you can guarantee that he will be one of those that's in training working his proverbials off giving it everything regardless even though at minute he knows he ain't going to play on a Saturday he will still give it absolutely everything so yeah Tommy Smith back in for me I think last January February he did he had made a lot of mistakes West Ham again he made, he made quite a yeah. few didn't he Liverpool away at, at that point he was he did struggle a bit he had a bit of a bad spell uh, and Flo had as you know deserved to start yeah, in that yeah, run towards the end yeah. of the season but when David Wagner needed a solid back four or five last season Chelsea away it's no surprise Man City away Smith and Lover, is it? he's gone back to Tommy Smith and I think personally if Lerva and if Lerva's out and Eric Derm's not playing right back, then for me Tommy Smith should be back in if he's fit. The other quandary he's got is that Zanka is banned. Yeah, that's it. So he's not going to be playing. So what's going to happen there? Because Stankovic has been totally bombed out of anything, hasn't he? So and I'll be honest with you, without Wolves play. I wouldn't be fancying Stankovic getting pace, thrown in there. No, so is that a game where does does Tommy Smith play as part of that three? Does Danny Williams come in and do a job there? Does Condurn play there? I think it's got to be back four. It's a it? tough one, but you go to back four. Back four. Even, even then, there's even little things which shouldn't matter, but they do for professional footballers, and that's 
Christopher Schindler tends to play on the left yeah, he does. of a centre back. Neil, you've played centre back, you know that left and right <laughs> centre back. Yeah, right, Cosy. <laughs> left. <laughs> and, uh, That's goes, in DVD like, footage. He's sat there going, Neil, centre back. Yeah, like, and, Andy yeah. Duggan, that lad. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but he's, uh, but you know from playing there that left centre back, right centre back, there is a di- there is a difference between playing the two and Schindler. Oh, massively, you can't just show on somebody into one. Because it's, and it's like, playing Congolo means Schindler would have to go across to right centre back for does, probably yeah. the first time. Which, Up their town. Which is a bit but comfortable. But, but it's good. I'd, I'd rather Schindler there than Shuan in a Stankovic in or somebody who's not played centre back for a long time. I'd so if he, if he does go for, for me, you're going Smith, Schindler, Congolo. Um, I go with that and I'd be no playing. I'd be playing across midfield. And then Hogan you've got you, and yeah. Billy. Well, to be you'd start those three again. The, the one who might be unlucky, depending how he plays this, is Pritchard. the match winner from the last oh. game. Because if you go four five one. There's not really a shirt there for him because he's not a wide man. The, I think when we went four four two on Saturday, Moy went across to the right and Pritchard played off of Mounier, yeah. so there is a chance. But you don't really want Moy chasing a left left wing back no. all day, do you? That's it, we saw that at Watford, and it's it's not his game. No, it's not his game. But but then it means he's also then got a plump for um, two of his wingers, unless he plays Tommy Smith and Flo. Hadish and I has done a great job yeah, in midfield play, play before. Floor. I'm, I'm not a fan of him as a right back, but as a midfielder, I think he's had some really but good games. Floor could play in front of Smith mm. if they, if they played four at bat. Play, yeah, play, absolutely. Play floor in front I won't, of Smith. I be against that at all. So he's got some options. It's a shame that how the suspension of the injury have fallen because let's be fair, both Lever and Zanka would have been absolute certainties to start. Okay, so thanks for listening again. Thank you for all your feedback. Thanks to our sponsor again, BidOrBuyGolf.com. If you looking for a golf holiday in Spain, have a look on the website and send a you know, just have a look and, and see what you think. One thing, Neil. That's him in the corner and him in the spotlight. The Michael Stipe of the Andy Takes That Chance podcast. Here to sing us out. Richard Chicken Ticker Cosmala. So anyone go to Molyneux will hear this song about one minute to four, but I want you to sing this version. You're everywhere and nowhere, baby. That's where you're at. Going down the M6 with your blue and white hats. Flying across the country and getting fat. Saying everything is groovy. We ain't won away and it's I who would us feel town anywhere you go now, baby. We see 1,500 fans down the side, but we will make a fuss, though it's obvious. Up the town, shout, out shout them, what do you call them? Wolves. Wolves. <laughs> At the end. <laughs> oh, God. Is this the moment for Lee Fowler? It is. Take your place in Division 2, Huddersfield Town. He's missed. Steve Simonson clears the flame of the goal and collapses in a heap of tears. Pete's got a chance. Yes. And he scores. Jack Pete scores. In there. Smith scores for Field Town! 3-2 Town! For a Sherry, Danny Ward saves! Danny Ward saves! The Quattro's in, round to Heia! 2-0 Huddersfield Town! Christopher Schindler has a chance to write his name in Huddersfield Town legend. And he takes that chance!